Hey everyone, uh, I just wanted to make a video about domain and range, like I said I would do. So, um, first thing what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the notation for domain and range. So when you're talking about domain and range, uh, you're of course talking about a set of something. So we're always going to have to open up with a set bracket. Okay. Um, now when you're talking about uh, the domain and range of a function or a relation that has an infinite number of points, we need a good way of talking about the x values or the y values. Um, so we obviously can't just list them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the notation that you're going to use when you uh, have to actually you know, talk about an infinite number of values. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this next section, which is x, e, r. Now the x is, of course, standing for the x values. That funny-looking e there, that stands for or that, that, that can be written as which are elements of, and the funny-looking r you would read as the real number system. Okay, so I'm basically doing a translation of these symbols into English for you so that you can kind of read them out as you go along. All right, and then a lot of times uh, you're going to have certain conditions on the x values or in some cases the y values that you're going to be talking about. So the, to make a condition, you're going to need a bar that looks like that, and that's, that bar stands for such that. Okay, and then you're going to have the condition uh, that's going to look something like this. Okay. Now, in this case, the condition is that x is bigger than uh, or equal to 4. So if you wanted to, you could read this entire line out as uh, a sentence. So, for example, it would stand for the set of x values, which are elements of the real number system such that x is bigger than or equal to 4. Okay. So that's the, how you'd write the notation. Let's look at some specific examples of writing domain and range. Okay, so what I'm making for you here is a graph with several points on it, so the points are in red. Now, in this case, the domain and the range, uh, we're not going to have an infinite number of points because, as you can clearly see, we only have four points on the graph. So when you have a scenario like this, you can actually just list out the domain, uh, sorry, the x values in the domain and the y values for the range. Let's see how that would look like. So for the domain, we're, of course, going to start with a set bracket. We're going to list out the x values because domain refers to the x values on a function. So in this case, we have negative 7, negative 2, positive 2, and 6. And then we close our set bracket, and that would be our domain. Now notice that I did list them in order from uh, least to greatest. Now, technically, in a set, it's not necessary to list them from least to greatest, but this is just a convention that's followed to make sure that everyone has exactly the same answer when, they're, when they've been asked for the domain. Okay, for the range... We're, of course, going to start with a set bracket again. We're going to list out the y values that are part of the function because we're talking about range. And the y values are negative 5, negative 3, and positive 3. And then we close our set bracket. So these are the domain and range for a, a relation like, like this where you have just a list of points, where you just have a set of points. You can just list out the, the x values and the y values for domain and range. Okay, next let's see what's going to happen when you have uh, something where you have an infinite number of points, like, say, on a parabola like this. So uh, we need to use that special notation we learned about before as opposed to just listing them because there are an infinite number of points on this graph, which means, of course, there's an infinite number of x values for the domain and an infinite number of y values for the range. So when we're talking about the domain here, well, hopefully you guys can see that uh, the function is going to continue forever in this direction and forever in this direction as well. Okay, So the domain is going to basically can be composed of any possible x value that you can come up with. So the way of saying that, as, a, you know, as opposed to listing them, is we're going to do our set bracket, and then we're going to say x e e r, which again stands for x is an element of the real number system. So when you're talking about all possible x values for your domain, you're saying the set of x values which are elements of the real number system. That's just another way of saying every possible x value. Okay, for the range, well, <clears throat> as you could see, uh, not all the y values are going to be included in our range because there is a minimum value on our function right here. Okay, So it's got a minimum value of negative 4. So uh, we're still going to have an infinite number of points, though. It's just that you know it's not going to include all the ones that are less than negative 4. So we're going to start out with our set bracket. It's going to say y is an element of the real number system. But since it does not include all the possible y values, we're going to have to make a condition. So we're going to use this as our condition. We have our such that line. Okay, and our condition is that y is greater than or equal to negative 4. 
and then we close our bracket. So y is an element of the real number system such that y is bigger than or equal to negative 4. That's another way of saying all possible y values bigger than or equal to negative 4. Okay? Let's take a look at one more example. So in this case, I've got a circle. Okay? And uh, the thing with a circle is that uh, you are going to have only a specific range of values for your domain and a specific range of values for, for your range as well. So when we're talking about the domain for something like a circle, okay, we still have an infinite number of points because, of course, this circle goes from negative 3 on the x-axis to positive 3 on the x-axis, but we're going to have to write our conditions still. So we're going to have the set of x values, which are elements of the real number system, Okay, but since we range from negative 3 to positive 3, we do need a condition. So I'm going to make a such that line. And our condition is going to be negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. Right? So this condition is basically a quick way of saying all possible x values between negative 3 and positive 3. Okay? Now for our range, we're talking about the y values. Well, as you can see, we, our y values are going to range between negative 3 and positive 3 as well. So our range is going to look very similar, except we're, of course, going to be talking about y values. So the range is the set of y values, which are elements of the real number system, such that negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3, which, again, is a quick way of saying all possible y values between negative 3 and positive 3. So I hope this video has helped you guys a little bit with the domain and range. I know that some people were saying they were having some issues kind of understanding the notation. So hopefully this will help you out before Monday. Uh, watch over it as, as much as you need to, of course, uh, and I guess I'll see you guys on the Monday, so take care.